You're watching Osceola TV on EW.com. <clears throat> House is finally going there. Like what? Something about you? Something you could interpret as being about you? When the Fox hit returns with its seventh season this fall, House and Wilson will be involved in a serious relationship. The logical course of any adult relationship could one day lead to fornication. With other people. Wow, that's very strange. Wilson with his ex Sam, and House, of course, with Cuddy. I've got two words for you. Double double date with Wilson and his ex. What do you, do, what do you think? Do you like think, that idea? I think it's hilarious. You do why? What's funny about it? Because I think we've never seen the two of them in like real relationships at the same time. Well see what I love about that is is that um, essentially I've always viewed our guys as a family and they are a family. And so now this season with coupling up with you know others you know uh, I wonder if our guys don't try to sneak back and have a beer with just the guys. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know how how well do our characters who only have last names, you know, Cuddy House, Wilson, Chase, how do they couple up? Uh, so we'll see. Since Smallville's October 22nd episode is called Isis, fans are thinking that the show is getting ready to introduce the classic DC Comics goddess. But are they? Well, I'm here to confirm exclusively that the answer is yes. Isis, dedicated foe of evil, defender of the weak. Champion of truth and justice. But wait, there's more. The actress playing the plum part is Smallville's very own Lois Lane, Erica Durant. Fox's guy-heavy human target is adding yet another female character to its ensemble. Bingo. For those keeping track at home, the show recently cast Rome's Indira Varma to play the new team leader and Entourage's Janet Montgomery to play an experienced thief. Now, special off yellow TV correspondent Shy McBride breaks news about the third lady coming on board. Shy? We're going to get into Winston's personal life. He's got an ex-wife. Really? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just found she's that out. She's still alive. She's got an ex-wife. <laughs> and, well, and she's, cool. still, she's still alive, yeah. Uh, but uh, he's got an ex-wife, and um, she causes him some, some personal agita. Has that been cast yet? Not yet. Now I'm going to do something totally out of character toot my own horn. I just found out that I've been nominated for the prestigious World's Greatest On-Camera Interviewer of 2010 by my Aunt Joan. Now, naturally, I'm honored and humbled. But for a while there, I was also stumped because I had to submit one interview from the past year to the Blue Ribbon panel. Do you want to take that? No, no. Um, Steven Spielberg can wait. Hold on. How could I choose one interview that would showcase all of my remarkable on-camera skills? Let's get the trousers next. <laughs> How could one segment demonstrate not only my ability to listen and intuit, but my knack for bringing out the best in my interviewees? Take three. So I'm compute. Take four. This is worse than on set. <laughs> and then I remembered this one. What's the biggest change in your life since Glee became exploded? Biggest change? Like, how are you? What's the biggest difference in your life? Anything like from, from a year clothes. ago? You get a little free clothes. Yeah. And uh, awkward interviews on the red carpet. <laughs> Is this awkward? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, I got this one in the bag. You're my hero. You're my hero.